The four weeks previous to the Saints matchup with the Steelers, Michael Thomas did not reach the end zone. After weeks of double teams, he knew on the Saints final drive, he had a chance to end the drought and catch the game winner. How many kisses on a, on a daily basis do you send your girlfriend via, via emoji? Like 30, 40. 30 or 40? <laughs> She liked me. That's a lot, man. <laughs> she loved me. <laughs> but it was all Michael Thomas. Maybe they were thrown for a loop and thought that the undrafted free agents were all going to score touchdowns <laughs> yes. again. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. But look, I mean, this is why Michael Thomas, in my opinion, is a top three NFL wide receiver. At worst. I mean, he can yes. go in and dominate a football game anytime that he wants to. The first game they open the season, they dismantle the Rockets. That's a team that's arguably a healthy Chris Paul away from making it to the NBA Finals. He didn't waste any time or breath reanalyzing the debacle at Texas A&M that resulted in LSU losing their final regular season game. But just like any girl or guy who's been broken up with, say, via text message, Ed Ogeron certainly wasn't over the situation. A meet has become the epicenter of the latest LSU Alabama recruiting war. Both of these players mean so much to both Ed Ogeron and Nick Saban that both have flown helicopters here multiple times. Now look, I asked LSU officials after the game, is there any situation you've seen where you've sent film to the SEC office that could overturn a situation like this and make Devin White eligible for the first half against Alabama? They said they've never seen a situation like that. I can tell you it felt like it was in the 40s. Bell Chase head coach Steven Myers was in shorts. He said in his 30 some odd years coaching, he said he's never worn long pants on the sideline. It was a part of the mindset. Well, Joe Este is a native New Orleanian who attended Bonneville High school and he is now a rookie NFL hopeful with the Tennessee Titans. His dream has always been to reach the National Football League but due to incredibly heartbreaking family circumstances he's now looking after and protecting more than just his own dreams. Andrew Doak has more from Marrero. In the heat and humidity of the Louisiana summer Joe Este is battling more than just the sizzling temperatures. Este is a long shot rookie hoping to play on Sundays, but that's merely a small part of his fight. I have never met anyone like Joe in my life until I met Joe. He said he had the same, the hip extension. Meet Gary Scheffler. He's the co-owner and operator of GLS training facility in Marrero. Last January, Scheffler got a call from Este's mentor and former high school coach, Don Cox. He needed a favor. After finishing his career at UT Martin, Este needed somewhere to train ahead of his pro day. Cox asked Scheffler if he could take him on. Of course, Scheffler obliged. But the connection that followed between Este and Scheffler felt like fate. Two weeks into training together, Scheffler innocently Googled Joe Este's name. His harmless hope was to find a simple photo of Este in a UT Martin jersey so they could promote it on one of their social media sites. But what Scheffler discovered next was a story, one that stirred his soul. I get, I get this story about him adopting his nephews. During his first semester at UT Martin, Este received a phone call from his mother, Candris Este. Well, one day she called me and she was like, son, I can't do this. You know, I'm like, do what? She's like, I can't take care of the boys no more. You know, and it was a devastating moment for me because it was like, okay, now what? They don't have nowhere else to go. His mother had been taking care of his sister's children. His sister has not been a part of their lives since she struggled with substance abuse. At 22 years old, Este was considering throwing in the towel on his football career. That's when Cox, the man he calls Pops, stepped in. Well, his coach called me at first, was like, Joe's going through some problems. He's thinking about quitting because of his nephew. So no, Joe's not gonna quit, we're gonna find a way. As a junior in college, Este took in his elementary age nephews, Zachary and Christopher. Probably one of the biggest challenges I faced it in my life because not not ready to be an adult, you know, not looking to be an adult, not looking to, you know, be able to take care of two eyes, you know, two little guys every day, you know, at a at a high level. And that was just the first part of the heartbreaking news Este would receive from his mother. I got a phone call from a lady crying, you know, I didn't know who it was, but it's my mother my mother. And she was like, I'm homeless, you know, and I'm like, wait. You know, this ain't, this ain't my mom, like, who is it, you know? At the end of his first season with the Skyhawks, Este's mother told him she had been homeless for two years. She was living out of her truck in Kenner and sleeping in the parking lot of Treasure Chest Casino. Again, Este was forced to be the grown-up, and without hesitation, 
he took in his mother as well. Oh, work is not easy for Fast forward to now, Este is providing inspiration to more than just his nephews and his mother, but also the personal trainer in Marrero, who was simply helping a friend who had asked for a favor and wound up needing Joe as much as anyone else. When I started reading into it and the situation and all, it, it really struck me in my heart, like because of my situation, I, I'm in recovery also. And his sister was going through some struggles and what he did for his nephews. You know, I had family that helped out with my, my daughter, my oldest daughter, so it was, it was, um, it almost felt like he was supposed to be here at that point. Este wore number two at Tennessee Martin for the past two years. After two seasons at Capaya Lincoln Community College, very few guys who go the JUCO route have a shot at the NFL. But in May, Este was one of just five tryout players at Titans rookie minicamp to earn an undrafted free agent contract. And it was handed to him personally by Tennessee general manager, John Robinson. Mr. John Robinson, he was like, man, I don't know why you got all them bags, but uh, you ain't flying nowhere anytime soon. You know, we're gonna keep you in Nashville. And right then and there, you know, it was just a, like I said, a life changing moment. This road of life has detours, dead ends, and U-turns. Ah. It's sort of like Google Maps. It'll take you the wrong way a few times before you make it to your destination. But through that struggle is what makes the finish all the more rewarding. From Marrero, Andrew Doak, Eyewitness Sports. All right, here with Tulane Safety, Rod Teamer walking 100 yards. You're, you're here, you're a certified dog trainer, apparently. Yeah. You have like a million dogs. How many do you have? I have eight dogs in total right now. I have six that stay with my family, and I have some that were adopted out, and my girlfriend actually has two dogs. But you have six at your house. Mm -hmm. how, yeah. do you, how do you handle all that, man? That's I mean, crazy. I'm not going to take credit for it now because I'm in college. Um, my dad and my sisters and my mom, they do all the work at home now. Uh, you already have to talk to them about it, but it is pretty pretty taxing definitely a, a normal trip to pet smart that's like that's serious you we know? don't we don't even take those anymore uh everything online order uh 50 pound bag of dog food stuff like that all right that's smart okay <laughs> if you could go to dinner with uh one person dead or alive who are you picking out michael jackson really definitely why michael jackson um my grandmother is probably one of the biggest michael jackson fans that i know I always loved Michael Jackson from the time I was a little boy till now. I, I could listen to Michael Jackson, do all the dances. If I'm at a game and they play Michael Jackson, we doing our dances on the sideline and stuff. So I definitely I'll talk to Michael Jackson. Favorite song? Uh, Thriller. Thriller. Definitely. And that's good timing right now. We're right around Halloween. And it's probably it's mostly because of the video. That's why. Yeah. Can, yeah. can you do it? I, I'm not going to do it for you. <laughs> OK, what's your favorite emoji? Oh, I had definitely had to say the kiss emoji. The kiss emoji? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard that one yet. Well, because everybody ain't sending as many kisses as me, that's why. Oh. No. How many kisses on a, on a daily basis do you send your girlfriend via, via emoji? Like 30, 40. 30 or 40? <laughs> she liked me. That's a lot, man. <laughs> she loved me. 